So it's YouTube Chef here, back again with yet another finalized build, this time a mage. We apply the same principles here as in our final version of the turret build, pretty much doubling our damage. If you haven't seen it, let me quickly summarize. We try to gain as many buffs from a model offering as we can. This gives us 5% additional damage from the corresponding ailments damage type for each ailment stack of a different type up to 5. Sadly, with our mage build we cannot make use of residual energy because that doesn't affect spells. So we need to convert damage on our spells into the damage type that we want to get as many different ailments as we can. If we would not use those skill modifiers, the model offering buff would make it so our highest damage type would be the one where we already gained the buff. Since it adds the corresponding damage type from the ailment, meaning we could only have one buff, so we are using Aether Jump to apply stasis, Winter's Grass converted into Shadow for a curse, Thunder Strike for shock, and Consuming Embers with shock as well. Since Burn currently does not work, you can get the model offering buff from it, but the damage gain is bucked, it doesn't give you anything. Also, Frost isn't an option either, you cannot get the model offering buff from it. That's the reason why we transform Arctic Spear into Sacred for weakness. Also in addition, weakness stacks on living enemies also increase the damage they take since they lose resistances. I also realized that we can cast Arctic Spear way faster if we get more cooldown reduction. But because of that we need way more willpower, so this time there's a huge focus on transfer time and resource cost reduction. Which is fairly difficult to get in addition to damage increases. You're gonna see in the item section that I'm not using optimal gear, so remember to get the affixes that I say, not the ones that I use. Also, projectile damage doesn't seem to scale well with Arctic Spear and not at all with other spells, so I opted to not go for that anymore. And as a last note, some people have pointed out that they struggle with keeping their model offering buffs up and as a result have very inconsistent damage. I will give options to increase consistency for a decrease in damage in the different sections and as well what you can do if you want a rage dump, since personally I only spam well potions for resource generation. With the introduction out of the way, let's go over the details in the items, skills, attributes and passive sections. Items, helmet and chest, as always the manic slaughter ethics, damage per unspent reach, highest roll is 9%, this is very important, it is currently the highest damage increase in the game and it is best in slot for any build, since increases that only say damage, scale anything, attack, spell and ailment damage. Additionally we also want cooldown reduction and transfer time reduction on here, but it will be very difficult to get. Weapon. We are using a staff this time because like I said transfer time reduction is very important for us because we can use ice spear very quickly and if we would not get all that reduction on gear we would end up with a white willpower bar all the time. We are looking for free flat spell damage, crit damage, spell crit chance, free sockets and the highest transfer time reduction we can get. Spell cast speed is decent since it affects thunder strike and consuming ember but prioritize the other affixes. Normal catalysts give us a huge transfer time reduction debuff, so they are not an option. A possible choice would be the unique catalyst Max Fest and Anna Act, since it doesn't have the usual catalyst restriction, but because of missing flat spell damage, it's quite a big damage loss. Belt. We have to use the unique the trial because we cannot use catalysts, so we cannot equip a dagger or pistol to apply mark of impurity ourselves. Missing out on the flat damage from a normal belt because of it, that results in about 1k less damage, but we have to sacrifice it for the transfer time reduction. This one is fairly rare, not as impossible to get like the Argon's half gloves, but still pretty uncommon. If you don't have it, then you need to swap out consuming embers for mark of impurity and apply it yourself. On the other accessories, rings and amulet we are looking for in total plus 4 ailment stacks applied and 1 pierce. Other stats on them from most important to least, free flat spell damage affixes, crit damage, percent increased elemental damage and a socket. Gloves and shoulders again from most to least important, reach and willpower cost reduction, percent increased elemental damage, highest roll on that is 35, preferably ferocity but wisdom works as well, and if you do low level grinding or resistance, since in high levels anything is gonna one shot you anyways. Optionally the unique shoulder Hakarerish Shalya is good for even more transfer time reduction and a little less DPS. Legs with transfer time reduction and cooldown reduction. 
Here you could use the unique leg armor Veiled Eclipse and convert Thunderstrike into Shadow to have a skill that uses reach, but I personally just sustain with willpower potions or auto attack if I have to. And shoes with ferocity and move speed. Skills. Our main damage skill, Arctic Spear with the skill modifiers Beauty of Hope for the Sacred Conversion to apply weakness, Crystal Javelin and Comet Ballista for increased damage, and Boon of the Super for less resource used. Next one, Consuming Embers, converted into Lightning Damage since Burn does not do anything for us, Passions of Flame for more damage, and Object of Desire for an additional damage buff. Like I said, swap this skill for Mark of Impurity if you cannot find a unique belt to trial. If you have the trial belt, use these modifiers since they still work, even if you don't cast the skill yourself. Target Eliminated and Big Game Hunting for more damage, Weight of Infamy to proc our passive note, and Fate of the Unholy for faster clear. If you don't have the unique belt, swap this out for a guild by association. Next spell, Thunderstrike. As you can see, this spell would apply weakness, since my gear gives me a lot of sacred damage to spells, but because of consuming embers and rebuilding the trinity gives us additional lightning damage, it will shock. Other modifiers are Smiting Hunger and Merciless Conduit for more damage, and Crippling Current for more ailment chance. Next up, Winter's Grasp with Concentrated Shadow to apply Curse. By the way, Winter's Grasp will always have a 100% chance to apply either Frost or Curse, even when you can't deal elemental damage, for example when using the passive note Gods Amongst Men, Ice Pawn to spam it more often, and Hail the Ice Queen for an another additional damage buff. Last skill is Aether Jump, the same thing applies to this modifiers, Fragments of the Aether, this will always apply Stasis, even if you can't deal Aether damage, Spirits of the Void for more Stasis stacks, Escape Artist for a higher range, and March of the Time Devourers to remove the cooldown. As a side note, if you do play with friends that also use a model offering, you could use Annihilation with Inevitable Decay to proc poison since allies that kill enemies with element stacks on them also gain their model offering buff even if they didn't apply those themselves. Attributes. I'm putting all points into ferocity since having everything in one attribute gives the most damage. With that said, if you don't have enough ailment chance, put as many points into Wisdom as you prefer. Currently I have 10% chance to apply Weakness with Arctic Spear and it is more than enough for me, but like I said, it's a trade-off for less damage but more consistency. Passives. Starting off in the Soldier Tree, grabbing all the crit damage on the way down to the Cabalist. Picking up a Model Offering there. Continuing the scholar tree from the soldier to get merciless lethality in the assassin's tree. The scholar tree to get even more resource cost reduction and maximum resource. Into the Praetorian to grab the two crit damage nodes here and there. Making our way over into the warlock, grabbing another spell cost reduction. And duty to exterminate with the two nodes behind it for maximum resource. Into the Ranger Tree, getting Meditative Focus, Persistence, Hunting and Archeon's Teaching for more damage. If you want Consistency over damage, then instead of Persistence, Hunting and the optional Crit Damage node in the Soldier Tree, grab Grievous Inflictions. This will make it so once you gained an Immortal Offering buff, the next spell will apply the ailment again as well as its primary ailment, so keeping the buff is easier. And you could also grab the Physician and the Scholar Tree for even more ailment chance score. Keep in mind the score gives you less effective chance the more score you get. And that's it for this guide. Hope you liked the build. Subscribe for future Wolves and content. Also if you appreciate the time and effort I put into this, leave me a like. Shoutouts to my YouTube Wolves and community. You guys are amazing. There are so many people being grateful and encouraging me to keep going. If you want to go the extra mile and give me a tip, I have made a Patreon account since some people did ask for it. But that is completely optional. Like I said, the YouTube community is awesome. Being a content creator was always my dream. I've tried it on Twitch the last two years with almost 3000 hours streamed, but it never worked out. But in the two months that I'm creating content on YouTube now, I've already more clicks than on Twitch. So thank you again for being here. And as always, I'll leave you with more gameplay. Servus YouTube.